so at this point we've got our uh, we've got our customization there's of course more things we could do with it such as again the uh, user input right now it, it takes any input which if someone goes in and selects to customize and they type in one two three then it of course it'll dutifully say welcome one two three uh, so we might not want that we might it all we might it only wanted to take real names, but then of course maybe your name is, you know, THX1138, and then no problem. George Lucas fans out there? No. Anyway, so what if you put in instead symbols? What if a person went in there and just for fun started to, you know, do some cartoon cursing? So yeah, it'll take that, no problem. Why wouldn't it? So it'll say, "Welcome, you so and so." <laughs> so it's not going to care what you input. And what about this? What if you click on it, uh, customize, and you click OK, but you didn't type anything? <coughs> putting empty, but then it's also putting the comma and the exclamation point that it is programmed to put. Okay. And then the last test, I think, if we do customize, we say, never mind, I don't want to customize this. Cancel. No. Mm -hmm. So we've got all of those possibilities that you might not have, uh, have thought of because, again, I'm thinking this is going to work perfectly like I've seen it work in a bunch of apps before. Those apps work because people thought of all of these possibilities and dealt with them. Us, we've got other things to, work, to worry about. I'm not going to go in and troubleshoot this and really make it accept the best input and all of that. Maybe on a version 2 of it. Maybe you'll figure something out and we'll share with the class. I'm going to move on. It's not perfect here, but we have also plenty of other things to talk about. And the thing about software is, one theory is, you might want to work on the uh, minimal viable version, which is what version of the project is, is minimal enough, complete enough, uh, that it works enough for you to publish. Because you could be working on your app forever and ever and ever because you need one more thing, one more little edge fixed, one more idea that I just got, one more idea that my friend gave me. And it's been a long time that the app hasn't been published or a long time that it hasn't been updated. So you have to decide at what point are you done enough to get it out the door. There's going to be some rough edges, but you probably don't have a team of people to help you with it. So if you're the only one, you have to decide what are your what are your, uh, your milestones and uh, what's the minimal, minimum viable product to, to launch? So at this point, it's fine. Uh, maybe some of us with a bit more OCD would say it's not fine, we need it to work. <coughs> but I'm going to move on. What we want to do is, um, remember the ultimate goal of this project is, I mean this class, part one, is that we end up with a web project, a web app, a, a website. And this still has some stuff to do, like it's still got some gibberish text here and there, perhaps. Uh, that's of course trivial to, to fix. Um, but what I wanted to do is, if you recall back to when we had the wireframe drawn up here, we had mapped out all of the different screens of the project. And all of those screens were encompassed in a folder because actually we have a step before seeing, seeing the index. We have a step zero in a sense. We have what do we see first that decides is this a mobile project or is a desktop project? If it's mobile then show us the mobile. If it's a desktop site then show us the desktop version. So we're going to have to deal with that and that's going to be JavaScript. That's going to be JavaScript for it to test what kind of browser, what kind of computer are you running, or various other factors we can test for. Once we know that, then we can, um, then we can direct people to the right version. Remember, we're working with um, AWD, Adaptive Web Design. We're going to give the user the version of the project that would work best for them, as opposed to responsive web design, which is sort of one-size-fits-all that adapts to what the person needs. Um, but we need to incorporate some JavaScript here. So we'll do this. Close your, your browsers. If you opened up more than one browser, close the browsers for the moment. 
in Notepad, go to File, Save All, make sure all your files are saved, and then in Notepad, once you've saved them, close your files. Don't close Notepad, close all your files. I want you to close all your files in Notepad. The reason is we're going to do stuff outside with the files and the folder structure and such, and if you've got that stuff open, you might have a conflict in that you move the file to another folder, but it's still open in Notepad, and you'll get confused. So save all your files, close them in Notepad, and then minimize Notepad. Minimize Notepad so that then you could go over to your project folder. Mine's on my flash drive, so go to your project folder. There's my project folder. This folder right now, um, if you've been following along with mine inside of the folder, we've got a couple of these files that we're working with. And then the whole jQuery project, the whole jQuery mobile project, is in the mobile website folder. It's in there because that came from Codica way back when, when we designed our, our, our main interface a while ago, and we downloaded the Codica source code. It gave it to us with a larger containing folder, and inside it gave us a mobile website folder. If you don't have that, if you have only, you know, the project itself, you need to take a moment to have a root folder, and then the mobile website is in its own mobile, it's in its own folder. So to sketch it right here, you're going to need Let's say this is your flash drive. And then you've got a folder in here. Maybe we can call it website. This will have an index file that we're about to create, and then the folder of mobile. Someone's going to visit that index file, JavaScript will happen and guide them either to the mobile or guide them to the desktop. I've got that set up right now myself. You probably already have that set up if you've been using my folders from the, from the network folder. If you don't, set up something like that. Mobile in its own website inside of a larger project folder. And so what we're going to have Outside of the mobile file, we're going to have another index.html. We can have more than one index.html as long as they're separated by folders. We've got index.html inside the mobile website folder, and then we'll have an index.html outside of that as, as our, our step zero that determines which version to serve. Here's one way now. We need to create an index file. Here's one way in Windows. If you right-click an empty spot of the root folder here, you can select New, Text Document, and change its name completely to index.html. Don't leave the .txt, of course. Change it, and it, of course it'll complain. Are you sure you want to change the extension? Yes, we know what we're doing. Or at least I do. So we want an index file which will then guide us into the mobile if we need the mobile. If we don't, the user can stay in this index file or be guided to another, to another um, desktop-friendly version. This is basic file management here. The concept, maybe you need to wrap your head around it, but this is basic file management. So we'll create that new index file, and now we'll edit it in Notepad. So edit that index.html file in Notepad. We get a brand new blank document again. I'm going to type up a very, very quick and basic HTML5 document again. Maybe if you do it enough times, it will be second nature. Of course, we can start with some sort of, uh, you know, template. Oh, 
that's it. Just about nine lines. Well, one more thing. Let's say here. To STC. Just very basic 10 lines. Create a very, very simple HTML document again, like this, and then we'll make it do some JavaScript magic. Anyone need any help to set yourself up at this point? I just have a question. Yes. I don't know. Okay, I want to know the new, I'm going to create a new document. Uh, oh. But you don't take index out of the system. You are name it index. Well, yeah, exactly. You can do it the same way I do, which is fine. But uh, let's confirm again. So you save inside of the inside of that folder, right? Yeah. Outside of the mobile, right? You're called index.html. Okay. Just I can open the index. Just one once, and then change it. Well, if you want to save the save as type to HTML. So this, uh, imagine that this is the fully formed desktop version of the, of the website, of the unofficial SDCE website. I could have here the full project with the nav navigation and all of that. Imagine it's the full featured desktop version. Um, at the end, I'll also add a very simple link, mobile version. It's called mobile website, right? Mobile website, yes. So a very simple link over to the mobile version. Simply because if I if I save and run this, it would be a dead end. It doesn't do anything meaningful. But at the very least here, uh, if I save and run this, I'll have the link at the bottom. If I click that, then it'll take me to the jQuery mobile friendly version. I obviously want this to happen automatically. but if for whatever reason the person's JavaScript is turned off or not working, there's still a way for the person to manually select take me to the mobile version. And so what we're going to do is, is uh, run some JavaScript and what we'll do here is some browser sniffing. We're going to check what kind of web browser do you have or other parameters that we may choose and based on that answer then guide us to the appropriate location. I want this to happen right away. So we have the option of putting in JavaScript at the head or in the body. Usually if we put it in the body, we want stuff to be visible first and then run the JavaScript. If we put it in the head, we want the JavaScript to run as soon as possible before the rest of the page loads. That's why we may put one, put it in one place as opposed to the other or why we might put it in either place. So I want this JavaScript to detect as soon as possible. So we'll add JavaScript to the head. After our title, we'll add the script tag. And again, we usually build upon things, and here's a brand new concept. So before we make it really do what we want, the concept that we're going to work with is something called the user agent string. It's the fancy word for how does the, your web browser identify itself to a web page or a web server. So we'll write this alert. Something is going to pop up on screen. The something will be navigator dot. So we've seen console dot something, um, document dot something. Here we've got navigator dot something. I think we had navigator dot back when we did that back button. 
maybe? So navigator, this is something that is uh, being attached to or being uh, called as a part of the, the whole web browser itself. Navigator is the term for the web browser itself. So navigator dot user agent. And user agent has a capital A there. Save it and run it. Let's see what happens. Navigator dot user agent, capital A for agent. This is saying, give me the value of user agent of this particular navigator, this web browser, and show it on screen as a pop-up. And the script is right on top of line six because I want this to happen right away. So let's see. Firefox I run, pops up Mozilla. 5.0, Windows NT 6.1, Windows on Windows 64, Revision 31, Gecko 2010.0101, Firefox 31. Right, it's popping up to tell me this is what your web browser is telling uh, a website every time you connect to it. Maybe you never knew this. So every web browser has a user agent string. It identifies itself. Okay, so I'm seeing that result in Firefox, and I see that it says Firefox. What if I run this in Google Chrome? Go back to the code, run in Chrome, I get a pop-up, Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT 6.1, WoW 64, Apple WebKit 537, KHTML like Gecko, Chrome 43, Safari 537. So Chrome is related to Safari. <coughs> Their underlying code, parts of it, came from the same root, their branches. So it's mentioning that here in its lineage. In its user agent string. We're looking at the user agent string here. Okay, if you're curious, then you might want to check what about run Safari? Another pop up. Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT, WoW 64, Apple Web Kit 534, KHTML Lite Gecko, version 517, Safari 534. So it's identifying various aspects of itself. It's saying, are you seeing Windows NT 6.1? That's the internal code name of our current version of Windows. WoW 64, it's saying we've got a 64-bit um, operating system. And we're seeing something else called the rendering engine, WebKit. Over here on uh, Firefox, the rendering engine was Gecko. And then at the end, it's then usually saying which, which web browser is this and its, its version and such. The rendering engine is how does it take your HTML and translate it uh, into the web browser, <clears throat> into something visible on the web browser. One more. We can do run... Internet Explorer. That one also pops up. Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT, WoW 64, Trident, .NET version 2, and 3.5 and 3.0, Media Center PC 6.0, .NET 4, CND, InfoPath 3, Revision 11, like Gecko. So even though they're completely different web browsers, and you may love Firefox and hate Chrome, or love Chrome and hate Internet Explorer. If you look at their underlying code, a lot of it is very is shared. A lot of it is interrelated. So a lot of this code goes back and forth. And here now we've um, we've opened the uh, pulled back the curtain and, and seen that by saying, "Show me the user agent string," and that's what the pop-up is doing. Based on that then we can figure out what kind of website to display. Because if we were to run this on an Android device, somewhere in the agent string there, it would say Android. If we ran this on an iPhone, somewhere in that string, it would say iPhone. If we run that on a, on a Windows phone, somewhere in there, it would say Windows Mobile. So we can then, if we know that, then we can determine, okay, someone's visiting us on a mobile device. Therefore, let's show them the mobile version. And that's going to be the idea, again, of if-else. If they're on a mobile device, 
send them to the mobile version or else they're on a desktop so show them show the desktop version so that's what we're about to do I'm gonna comment out that line I know it works I'll comment it out all I did was display the user agent and then it went away I want to capture it so that I can do something with it so I'll capture it in a variable I suppose we could capture it in a local storage variable but it's not that necessary at our uh, in our point here so we'll create a plain old variable we'll call it UA for user agent and we'll say equals navigator dot user agent so now that that text that appeared on screen now it's stored in a variable On the next line, we will create an if-else statement. I'm going to check here. We're going to check a few actions. We won't, we won't fully be able to test this because I want the if to check. If you're on a mobile device, send me to the mobile version or else you're on desktop so send me to desktop we won't be able to test that unless we run this from a mobile device the only way to run this from a mobile device is to upload it to our web server and then connect to it on our mobile device how many of you have a web server <laughs> no one okay so creatively we have to then think okay so we'll think oppositely we'll think we'll assume that what we're loading is is, is a mobile device so send us to the mobile version what I mean is by looking at all of these examples do you see any keyword in all of these web browsers that appears over and over not gecko I don't see gecko and Internet Explorer Mozilla I see that the term Mozilla appears over and over and over I'm just trying to find some keyword that with whatever browser I test, I will trip the if-else statement, the first part of it. So we're going to search for, we're going to ask, is the word Mozilla somewhere inside of this string? If it is, send me to the mobile version. If it isn't, then don't send me there. I just need to do that at this point to test if my logic works. Because as I said, we can have errors in syntax, we can have errors in logic. And the errors in logic are the harder ones to deal with. Because all your code may be perfectly written, but if your concept, your logic of how it should work is not sound, then it won't work and it's hard to figure out. So I want to make sure, does this if-else work? Will it send me to a mobile device if a mobile device loaded, loaded the file? And I can sort of fake that by then searching for the term Mozilla. So I want to just check, is the term Mozilla inside of the user agent string? So we'll type UA. UA holds all of that text. We'll say dot match, match, open close parentheses. Dot match is some JavaScript to check if we find, it's like control F, it's like we're finding something, we're going to match, we're trying to match some text inside of some, some uh, block of text. We have a block of text in the UA, so let's, look, let's search for something, and when then in the parentheses type a slash, because we're searching for an expression, and what I'm trying to search for is, let's see if the, if the term Mozilla is in the string. But actually, this is case sensitive. So capital M. And I want to pop up in the else saying, yes, we found Mozilla.
else in the else section alert no we didn't find Mozilla we're trying to search we're trying to match can we find the word Mozilla inside the user agent string if we do we'll get a pop-up that says we found it if we don't find it in there, we'll get a pop up that says, no, we didn't find Mozilla in the user agent string. Save it and run it. Which pop up do you get? Do you mean it ended up with a colon? No. Thank you for that. Semicolon. Terminate the, the line with a semicolon. One more thing, actually. Um, notice the purple here. You need an, a terminating slash. So slash, the term that we're looking for, slash. So we're, we're looking for that term. If you didn't finish that slash, I noticed that my uh, per, uh, uh, parentheses were purple. That shouldn't be. They should be black, like that. Now let's... Check that. Pop up says, Yes, we found Mozilla. Okay, let's say I'm looking for Mozilla. I just change the string. No, we didn't find Mozilla. So I'm telling it to search for something inside of the string. Either it'll find it or it won't. If or else. Um, we put there with a capital M, but we don't know if the device manufacturer, because the great thing about Android is there's so many manufacturers and so many versions of it, but the bad thing about Android is there's so many manufacturers and so many versions of it, meaning that one company might have everything lowercase in their user agent string, and another company might have uppercase. So if we add to Mozilla slash I, then it becomes case insensitive. It ignores the case. So to show you, if I put lowercase m, I know there's an uppercase m in the string from the alert. Here I'm putting it in lowercase, but then I'm saying i at the end. Case insensitive. Don't worry about the case. And I'm saving and running it, and it should pop up. Yes, we found Mozilla. Is that the only time you can use that slash i? Can use that other places? Yeah, because we've got, it, it works in conjunction with match. We're trying to find something. And then the slash, oops, the slash is that this is an expression. So if you know about regular expressions, we could get pretty fancy in what we're searching for. And then we terminate that and then slash i. So it really just works for this, for this task. Let's see here. So I, I will save and run that. Pops up. Yes, we found Mozilla. I'm just trying to check if um, my logic is working. My syntax, I'm getting more confident with that. My logic, that's always perhaps going to be a challenge, because how can I tell this dumb computer what I want? I can easily articulate it to other people, but how can I get this dumb computer that is so literal, how can I get it to do what I want? So here I'm working toward that. I'm seeing that I am matching, and then I'm getting the alert. So what I would actually want it to do, imagine that we were searching for the keyword Android. We'll do that in a moment. But imagine we were searching for Android. So when someone visits on their Android device, it would then take us to the mobile version. We'll get to that in a moment. The goal of this if part, let's comment out the alert there because we know that that works. The goal of that then is to take us away from this 
from this index file to the index file in the mobile folder because this is a mobile we've triggered the mobile trap so we'll use some JavaScript here location dot replace location is a fancy term for the address the URL the current URL is index and I want to replace that with the mobile version we've got location dot replace and a couple of other ones this one will replace you and also um, remove the entry from history. If we use the other one, location dot something else, I don't remember, a person could still go back to the desktop version, even if they're on the mobile, which would look weird. So we're using replace to quickly move us from the desktop version to the mobile version. Inside of the replace, we've got quotes, and then the path to the index inside of mobile website slash index dot html I'm working on that blank index file that we created outside of the mobile folder let's see let's see if that works we we uh, a moment ago, we confirmed that it's finding Mozilla, therefore the pop-up would happen. That's our trigger, temporary, to then tell us, to let us then see if we, once we load this, it automatically jumps us to mobile. Let's see. I'm going to save it and run it. In the blink of an eye, it took me right to the mobile, because it checked. And in this case, it did find the keyword Mozilla, so it took me right away to the mobile version. If I was searching for something that's not in there, such as Mozilla, no, we didn't find Mozilla. Then it keeps me in the desktop version. That's the point of that if else. This is just a proof of concept. I've shown that if I do find the string, the item in the string, I can then be taken over to the mobile. If I don't find it, then it confirms you didn't find it. So actually what would happen in else is nothing. Just comment that out. Um, and therefore nothing happens and a person stays on the desktop version. Or if I had a, de if I had a desktop version set up, I could again have location replace desktop website. Don't do this. We don't have that. But see, this this check here would take them to mobile if it if it matched. If it didn't match, then we assume we're on desktop, so we take it to the desktop version. In our case we won't add that there because we just we're just gonna stay on this index file. Imagine again this is the full fully set up, fully functional desktop index file. Well, this was just to figure out the logic of it all. What I would really want, again, is to check for the mobile device. Here I'm just checking for a term that I know I will find in the string. On, on an Android device, the string will have the word Android in there. So actually, we should be searching for, we should be trying to match Android. Because it's case insensitive, don't worry about the spelling. Even though Android has about, uh, I think, like 80% market share, what's that other big name mobile device that people seem to care about? Uh, 
the iPhones and such. So we should also check what if someone visits on their iPhone. So we'll have to at the same time run another match. Maybe someone visits with Android, maybe someone visits with iPhone. That'll take you like 95% of all of the market share. Then somewhere in there is Windows Phone and then also some other some others that are still clinging clinging on like Blackberry and uh, uh, did you know that Firefox themselves have a have a phone uh, an operating system for phones um, also there's the brand new Ubuntu phone so there's this Linux phone that's out in Europe uh, so there's smaller players so the big ones of course are uh, in market share uh, Android number one iPhone number two Windows phone number three and number three is about three percent so you might say oh forget about that but Windows 10 that's coming out is going to be like the universal operating system. You know, Windows 10 is going to fit is going to work on your desktop, on your laptop, on your tablet, on your on your smartphone. So I would target those three. You could also target BlackBerry. It's just one extra little bit of code, and then we've covered all all of the names. But we need to cover the bases. So this would cover Android. We're going to add to this if to check. Well, it could be Android, it could be iPhone, it could be Windows Phone. We do it like this. Um, I'm going to wrap a parentheses. Watch this first and then you do it. I'm going to wrap a parentheses around the whole UA match. Notice the red parentheses. I started a parenthesis here and then I ended it here. So I've got three parentheses here. This one closes the if. This one closes the UA dot match. And this one specifically closes match. So you will see three there. Space. I want to check is it Android or is it iPhone or is it Windows Phone? So to use the keyword or, we don't write the word or in JavaScript, we use the pipe symbol. The pipe you might never use, unless you're writing some cool emoji or emoticon, is a shift backslash. It's right below the backspace and above enter. Shift backslash gives you a vertical pipe character. On older keyboards, for some reason, it almost looked like a colon that was elongated. So right above enter, it's backslash, and so shift backslash gives you the pipe. Two of these, side by side, there's no space there. So it's pipe pipe. Two pipes. That means or in JavaScript and many other languages. So we're saying, is it an Android phone or is it an iPhone? Space, parentheses. These two parentheses are going to serve the same purpose as this pair of parentheses to encompass the UA.match. So we're checking for this or this. In the parentheses, we will have ua dot match open close parentheses again three at the end there. So now we know why they're there. There's its pair. There's its pair. There's its pair. Now us ua ua. So you can type that now. You can type that now. Yes. Slash um, iPhone slash i so that it doesn't care about the uh, capitalization And if we choose, if we then also check for the third party candidate, uh, we will cover 98% of the market share. Um, so I will go past, I will go here. It's a good thing that these things highlight in Notepad. I want to go between the last two parentheses because that one closes this, the matching of iPhone. Between those two, I'll add a space. 
and I'll add another or space pipe pipe or another pair of parentheses and on this third attempt to match we'll have ua dot match open close parentheses this time slash it's called ie mobile slash i so for windows phone users that would be part of their user agent string that is unique to them So here we're checking for three possibilities. Is it Android or is it iPhone or is it IE mobile? And then we could also do one more. Or is it Blackberry? I don't know the keyword that's in the Blackberry string, however, I'd have to look it up. But again, this covers about 98% of all the market share. And if it if this trips uh, if the mobile device trips any one of those three, then it right away will go to location.replace and go to the mobile website index version. If it doesn't match any of those, we can be pretty sure that it's a desktop version of the... it's a desktop browser or laptop, and then it'll show us, it'll keep us within this file, the desktop-friendly version of the project. Obviously, if we save it and run it, nothing will happen because we're on a desktop. Therefore, none of these items matched, and we saw we went over to else, which is nothing, and we stay on the desktop version. That's what, what that's what might happen then. I, I went to it I went to that index file in my uh, with my desktop browser, so therefore it kept me in the desktop version. If I were to have visited this on my mobile device, then it would right away take me over to the mobile version. You can of course see that live if you go to vmcompos.com slash sdce on your mobile device. All of that's code is running like that and it'll go straight to the mobile version. If I go to it on my desktop, it'll go to the desktop version. See there? It tripped the non-desktop version and it's desktop. If you visit the same address, the exact same address on mobile, it'll go directly to mobile. If you are either on Android or iPhone or Windows Phone, uh, sorry, Blackberry users and sorry, um, Amazon. No, Amazon Fire would also work because they've got a version of Android and so forth. So that's what happens. So that is user agent string detection with a JavaScript to serve the most appropriate version to the user. general questions. If your code didn't quite work, I'm going to put it in the network folder in a moment and I'll help people in, in just a moment. But um, I want to mention a, uh, one more thing <clears throat> on our project and then, and then we'll be wrapping up the class.